description, that doesn't block this explanation. Right? The mathematic, mathematical example gives a description that really can be explored. But this, these common noun phrases seem sufficiently analogous to gerund nouns, these uh, you know, being tall, and also to that clauses, that since they're exportable, these ought to be too, regardless of what the content is. So it's not quite giving Marco what he would like. It would be, I mean, we'd all like lots of we examples. We can't always get what we want. Yeah, look, uh, you're, you're, you're saying that um, uh, anomalized uh, uh, yeah. something that the earth is, uh, is uh, round, or, uh, yeah. or you could even use your notation for you know church notation. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Even for a conceptual content. Yes, right. Yeah. Does not have to be a proposition, and that yeah. would be exportable. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. and and there is actually a debate about what the content of a that clause is. I mean, there's a controversy uh, as to whether it's descriptive or not descriptive. If it's descriptive, does it have to be in terms of a sentence, as Dummett believes? But whatever it is, it's exportable in this context. One can know a priori. And so my claim is, even if it's descriptive, it has to be a description that is exportable. And we know from mathematics that there are such descriptions. Outside of mathematics, it's harder to come up with clear-cut examples that are exportable. But even if you can't, it seems like there's a category of expressions that include all these nominalizations right, that are exportable anyway. And, and this seems to belong. These common, these common noun phrases belong to that category, so they are exportable. I'm not sure if I'm following, but uh, couldn't she also take any other example of a scientific analysis like that? So instead of water, take some other substance. So alcohol is a, the kind of matter composed of whatever, wouldn't that give another example of the same? I mean, if this is exportable, any well, other scientific analysis? If time? I understood the dialectic, is that right. why not to reject four? Well, four is plausible, at least in certain cases. Yeah, right, right. right. So, uh, well, yeah, which so I don't case? feel like I can give this not kind of example. Novel, yeah. right? I don't feel like I can give this kind of example because of the dialectical mm -hmm. situation. Because it's right? too close to four right. itself? Yeah, I mean, because. Remember, I said I was going to present a puzzle while well, actually a particular version of this puzzle involving you know, water, but presumably there are. There know, would be somehow circular to do yeah. that, what you're, what you're suggesting. Okay. Is it in yeah. general importation more problematic than export? Yes. Uh, in general, is it Well, because more, um, well. even if we, we take a definite descriptions, mm -hmm. it's not completely implausible to say that uh, if. Uh, if the, the guy believes that mm -hmm. uh, the, the person in the brown with the, the brown, brown hat is a spy, then he believes all of the person with the brown hat that he is a spy. Mm -hmm. Whereas it, it, it that's it's, exportation. That's exportation. Yeah, I mean, he thinks that's, that's more I mean, of course, there are famous cases where the exportation looks. Yeah, yeah. Problem it's that. more problematic to say that if he believes all of the guy with the brown hat that he's a spy, then he believes that the guy with the brown. Yeah. That is the more mm -hmm. problematic direction, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They're both. I think they're both problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a hard both. time knowing exactly how to um, rank which is more you know, problematic. But yeah, certainly it seems safe. Well, yeah, it seems pretty safe to export. Um, the man in the brown hat doesn't feel so safe to. Yeah. Exportation works in a wide range of cases. There are some pockets where it doesn't work. Right? Um, but most people who talk about the rate instructions think that you can export a, a wide variety of uh, descriptions as long as they, well, as Ernest Sosa says, as long as they're distinguished in some way, right? And this seems to be, if this is descriptive, it seems to be distinguished. distinguished. Can I just? No, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I thought Viviani had a question. Oh, maybe. Uh, it was hard to follow. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you presented a rejection for one, but sameness or the first is this 
efficient firm mm -hmm. in terms of time. I don't know if I understood well, it's based on impossible words. Right, so. I, I, can you explain more? I, yeah, sorry, this is a, a, a place where um, I, I get confused, you have to um, <laughs> think carefully. So the, the two kinds, right, were brown-eyed girl and girl whose eyes are brown and who is such that John Lennon was a member of the Beatles if um, the band existed, right? So they won't come apart in metaphysically um, possible worlds because John Lennon, or we're assuming that John Lennon has to be an member right. of... Um, Wouldn't be the Beatles without John Lennon. Right. right. I, I agree. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, It'd be a good band, yeah. but not the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> no um, Ringo, maybe. <laughs> Ringo. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> it wasn't such a but consider now, metaphysically, impossible worlds. Right. Right. Um, so, uh, consider metaphysically impossible worlds um, where um, there are brown-eyed girls um, and did I get this right? And the yeah. Beatles existed right. without um, John Lennon's having been a member. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So once in which there are, there are brown-eyed girls. Um, and the Beatles existed without um, John Lennon's having been a member. Maybe. Yeah, so um, they won't have the same, I don't know what, what name can we, name can we give to, to that, I guess. Um, Oh, the function it's, from worlds possible and impossible. Right, yeah. Yeah. So whatever whatever we call um, mm -hmm. that. So brown eyed brown eyed girl and girl whose eyes are brown and such a John Lennon's member um, of the Beatles if the band existed, they'll have different members on these um, metaphysically impossible. impossible. Could you say one thing I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Consider an impossible world. Right. Where John Lennon is not in pictures. John, yeah. yeah. So yeah. in such a world, some, a girl who has brown eyes will still be a member of the kind brown-eyed girl, but she won't be of the kind brown-eyed girl who's such that John Lennon is a member. Okay. Because John Lennon isn't a member, so she can't be of that kind. So the two kinds come apart. There's some a girl you would be a member of the brown-eyed girl kind, but not the brown-eyed girl with John Lennon as a member, because John Lennon isn't a member. So the two kinds are not the same, but in every possible world, they have exactly the same. These aren't, this isn't the possible world. We're talking about a world in which John Lennon isn't a member. So it only comes apart. And, you know, I, I mean, how, how yeah. would be how this represent the rejection for one? Because if it only happens in the possible world, so that means that one it's it's fine or not. No, because, so the idea is that yeah, so the idea is that those are supposed to name um, you know, I guess you know, it, you know they seem to name different um, different kinds, but they don't come apart in metaphysically possible worlds, right? Um, so I, it's supposed to, I guess, pump the intuition that these are different kinds, you know, even though... Um, the same yeah, and I mean, you know, you can take um, less confusing um, sort of example, you know, um, it is a, a, you know, it's provable in first order mm -hmm. logic or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. well, a truth, right? Is a, is a logical, is a logical truth. Um, if you feel like you know intuitively those are different kinds, um, then you know you just think, okay, well, there, there's your case, there's your case against, there's your case against one, right? 
But I, you know, I, I'm sort of hesitant to throw that. I mean, to, to me, I, I feel like, yeah, intuitively, those are just different kinds. I'm a little hesitant to throw that out, I guess, because um, you know, you, you might think that well, what we discover, you know, when we um, you know do our do our proofs and stuff, you know, we, we we discover that oh, these are really the same kinds. But the example also requires you to accept impossible worlds. Yeah, I know. I mean, the, 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 trouble, with, the trouble with this, right? Yeah, I, I mean, with, you know, as I'm, as I'm reading this, and, you know, I'm sort of thinking, well, to me, that, that's knocked down. So why do I even bother saying, well, i got to do some more work? But one of the reasons that I feel like I have to do some more work, right, is there are going to be people who think, nah, you can't help yourself to those impossible worlds. What are you doing? You know? What are you crazy? Right. <laughs> what are you crazy? Yeah. The, what are you yeah. crazy? Yeah. Yeah. crazy? Yeah. It's a what wonderful one. <laughs> I think it's good to use that example because at the Curitiba conference, the poster had a yellow submarine. So we have to bring the Beatles in somehow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I brought in Rocky Raccoon too. I didn't realize ah, yeah. that I had done that, but you know. Um. May, may I just press a little bit Breno's question? Because I think it's, we're going back to the Curitiba question, okay. which I, I'm sure was a confusion on my part, maybe on, on Breno's as well. I'm uh, sure. but, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, look, premise two, uh, yeah. uh, uh, thesis two. Uh, you were talking, well, the metaphysical intention of the kind, mm -hmm. of one kind, is the same as the metaphysical intention of the other kind. Mm -hmm. I think three follows straightforward. These are the same kind. Right. What does that mean for the epistemology, right? For knowing mm -hmm. something a priori or not? Mm -hmm. Because uh, at least, uh, I mean, uh, it's not immediately clear for me that if you have the same mm -hmm. metaphysical intentions, mm -hmm. Attach the, meta, the same metaphysical right. intention attached to different uh, kind terms, mm -hmm. for example, that you can know that a priori. It's not immediately clear right. Well, me. yeah, but, but I'm not saying that you know that a priori, right? right? It's that, that I mean, so for it's right. supposed to capture this immediate intuition. Well, yeah. So I, I mean, maybe I'll you know, do the argument from exploitation or whatever. But I really, when I look at four, I think it's really supposed to capture this immediate intuition that you know something about this kind. Right, really, de re about this kind, that are opposed to you know, two parts oxygen, and one part oxygen, but that you really know about that kind that all of its instances, right, are such and such a way, or opposed to blah, blah, blah. Said that way too many times. But, um, and if you know of that kind, right, just like if you know something of the man in the brown hat, well, you know something of the guy at the beach, right, the guy seen at the beach, because the guy seen at the beach is the guy with a brown hat. Um, and similar, right, I mean, the that's the claim that one is making, is that's, that's what, it, I mean, that's sufficient for sameness of kind. So it's because four is de re, right, that we can, that we, um, this Leibniz law inference is allowed. So I'm not. Um, yeah, but what, what, what about the a priori there? Um, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can certainly know that, but. Uh, why a priori? Uh, I mean, they are the certainly they are the same uh, uh, metaphysical intention, mm -hmm. but uh, it might be that I, I cannot that I have no means of knowing a priori. Uh, yeah, I mean, I you know I I, I think you don't know a priori. Teresa's not arguing, I don't know if you think she is, but she's not arguing that, uh, for example, if, if a sentence has, is true in every possible world, then it's a priori. She's not, argue, she's not arguing that, right? And so if you have two expressions that have the same intention, and you have a sentence that, right, that yeah. identifies them, they'll be true in every possible world. But it doesn't follow that it's a priori. Yeah. There are lots of examples for right. Ruki. And okay. this. But she's not relying on that. Right, so it's just, it's just that the knowledge in four, right, right is de re. And, and I do take it pretty much to be you know, intuitive that you can know a priori of, I mean, take, you, know, you can know a priori of the kind bachelor. Like, tell me stuff that you know from your armchair about the kind bachelor. Well, you know that all of its instances are unmarried, right? You, you, could, you could have told me that without going out and you know, interviewing a bunch of bachelors. 
Similarly, I think you can know of the kind that are composed basically of two parts H and one part O, right? That all of its instances are composed basically of two parts H and one part O. Oh, you know, I see. Instance, I see. Okay, you, you, see. you've got this de re a priori knowledge of this kind. It's not. Um, it's not. Yeah, because they're operating. Deeply the different from the way you know a priori of the kind bachelor that all of its instances are going to be unmarried. And then, right, then we get the Leibniz law inference because of this thing that I want to, I want to reject, but you know, that I'm um, taking people to take seriously, right? That sameness of metaphysical intention is sufficient for sameness of kind, but if that's right, then we, you know, do the Leibniz law inference to this thing that looks really unattractive, or at least intuitively, you know, looks really unattractive. Maybe in the end we have to accept it, Would that be a bit clearer if instead of for you you uh, you took as a premise the, the dicto version and then inferred mm -hmm. uh, for by exploitation and then made explicit that um, you are assuming exploitation? Mm -hmm. Perhaps because no one would disagree with the, the dicto version. Right. You can know a priori that uh, Mary composed blah, 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 is composed, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. No one would disagree with that, right? Uh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, may maybe that would be the, I mean, I, I can just tell you that, um, you know, um, as I thought about this, I mean, I really did, you know, I, I didn't sort of go through this exportation step in my head, you know, I was just thinking, hey, what do I know about this kind and that kind, you know, and, um, mm. So on, so it feels natural to, to do it this way. So I don't, I, I don't well, feel like I am. I've attempted to accept something like four mm -hmm. only on the basis, I suppose, only on the basis of the, the dicto and the, the exploitation rule. Mm -hmm. I don't think that by itself it, it's very. Really, you don't feel like you know things a priori of the kind of bachelor or whatever? I mean, well, yeah, but because. Yeah. But because. Uh, yeah. yeah, I, I, you know, I well, don't know that. I, I don't know what, you know hangs on it, but I certainly consider presenting it in that way. I'm wondering if, you know, you said the six, yeah. so the black and the board. Um, this, this seems quite hard to accept, although maybe ultimately we do have to accept it in the this way. But I wonder. I mean, one, not me. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if one can argue that if that's true, then nothing's nothing is a posteriori. Everything's going to be whatever you might think is a posteriori is going to involve some general term or other, mm -hmm. and it's going to have some intention. Mm -hmm. you know, you'll be able to specify that intention by saying. World W1, it's this, and World W2, it's this set, and, you know, and that's going to be a priori. So it looks like nothing, I mean, if you accept six, I haven't thought this through, but it looks like you need to generalize this. But in that case, nothing is ever a priori. Everything is knowable, not that we ever do know this way. But in principle. In principle, everything that's knowable at all is knowable a priori. And that would really be a shocker. Effort, you know, at least. Uh, Leibniz thought. Leibniz thought. <laughs> okay, so this would be a new argument for Leibniz, Leibniz right. epistemology, but it would really be a stunning result. Yeah, we generally thought it was implausible. <laughs> Especially if somehow millionism or direct reference has this as a, as a consequence. Things are looking bad. For yeah, me. <laughs> even I might yeah. think about getting off the train. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess, right, I, 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 feel, really, I like, feel really good about myself if I, I did yeah, this, especially if you, you had to get off that. That would be a shocking result, yeah. yeah. So I think it's better to say six isn't true <laughs> myself. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Thanks a lot, Teresa.